All right, so there was this thing in, in 1786 called Shays Rebellion. Basically, Massachusetts raised taxes to pay war debt, and a flash rebellion started, uh, led by a decorated Revolutionary War hero, Daniel Shays. And as Jefferson feared from Paris, a rather unjustified sense of alarm persuaded the states, except Rhode Island, to endorse the 1786 Annapolis call for another convention in May of 1787 in Philadelphia. Here's Patrick Henry's take on this. Remember, pretext, Shays' Rebellion. Just, this is complex enough, but just pretext, Shays' Rebellion. Patrick Henry, June 1788, said, okay, I'm gonna make one more statement. He's, he says the word the Confederation here. He's regarding the Articles of Confederation in his statement. His argument is that the Articles of Confederation were plenty, we didn't need a constitution, we didn't need centralized power, that's what he was afraid was gonna happen. And I'm not a statist, okay, but rolling it back to the beginning. The Articles of Confederation basically gave the states and the individual way more power in the constitution. Anybody who says differently, just read Royce's book and I got a bunch of other sources for you on this. The Confederation, the same despised government, merits, in my opinion, the highest encomium. It carried us through a long and dangerous war. It rendered us victorious in that bloody conflict with a powerful nation. It has secured us a territory greater than any monarch possesses. And shall a government which has been thus strong and vigorous be accused of imbecility and abandoned for want of energy? That was the argument that the Federalists were making. Greater danger, allegedly, would ensue if the Virginia Convention rose without adopting the Constitution. I ask, where is the danger? I see none. He's talking about Shays' Rebellion. Why are we rushing to do this? Remember all the pretexts? They've been playing this scam for a million years. I mean, this, this is the Patriot Act is a great example. You know, <gasps> quick, get that thing through. Nonsense. No one, no one has ever given a chance to think anything through. It took four or five years to get the states to agree to the Articles of Confederation. Hamilton, with Washington's help, pushed the Constitution through like that. It took like, I think it was like three, four months. Why then tell us of dangers to terrify us into an adoption of this new government? And yet, who knows the dangers that this new system may produce? They are out of sight of the common people. They cannot foresee latent consequences. I dread the operation of, operation of it on the middling and lower class of people. It is for them I fear the adoption of this system. I see great jeopardy in this new government. I see none from our present one. Public and private security are to be found here in the highest degree. sir. It is the fortune of a free people not to be intimidated by imaginary dangers. Fear is the passion of slaves. Sounds about right to me. This is Washington. Uh, this is documented right, in letters, I believe, to John Jay. We have, probably, we have probably had too good an opinion of human nature in forming our confederation. There's that word confederation. We're still pre-constitution where he's making this comment. Experience has taught us that men will adopt and carry into execution measures the best calculated for their own good without the intervention of a coercive power. Many are of the opinion that Congress have too frequently made use of supplant, humble tone of requisition in applications to the states when they had a right to assert their imperial dignity and command obedience. Huh? If you tell the state legislators they have invaded the prerogatives of the, of the Confederacy, they will laugh in your face. Get it? They had no, there was no centralized power. And look at the word he uses. Imperial dignity, command obedience. Right, interesting. Also interesting is the fact that Washington's family is related to the Spencer family very closely. I think they're cousins. The family before George showed up here to, to lead this, this effort lived on the Spencer estate. The Spencer bloodline is Princess Diana's bloodline, okay? Lived on the Spencer estate. How do I know this? I can prove this in spade 56,000 times from Sunday. The latest Spencer, Earl Spencer, the guy who's probably only in his 50s right now, I remember the one who spoke at the funeral of Diana? He was in a, in a documentary I was watching on Netflix talking about the thing for 20 minutes. Oh yeah, right, yeah. Washington, she, he lived on our estate, it was great. It's the, well, he didn't really talk like that. I, I automatically break into you know, Mick Jagger, whenever I think about an English, you know. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. But anyway, look at the symbolism. All right, look at Washington symbol. And check out the Washington District of Columbia flag. Right. Mm -hmm. 
On 17 September 1787, 38 of the 41 delegates remaining signed in witness whereof. Whenever you hear Larkin Rose say that it wasn't even signed about the Constitution, that's what he's talking about. It was signed in witness whereof. They were not signing as delegates. But as unanimity of the states present, this clever deception hid the embarrassing fact that three delegates had refused to be part of the fraud and illegality. As Lansing and Yates had left, Hamilton generously signed for New York by himself, Alexander Hamilton, who's the wanker who pushed this thing through. A bit of math is illuminating here. The states chose 74 delegates, 19 of whom refused to attend. Of the 55 who stayed up in May, sorry, who showed up in May, 14 left early, leaving 41. Of the 41 who stayed through September, Dickinson had Reed signed from an abstention. Three refused to sign, so only 39 of the 74 chosen delegates signed the Constitution, signed it. 53% of the original 74, nearly half refused to attend, quit, or didn't sign. Ask why he boycotted the convention, Patrick Henry quit, because I smelled a rat. <clears throat> it was a group much different from the 1770s. Only eight had signed, only eight of these guys had signed the Declaration of Independence and six the Articles of Confederation. Only six had signed the Articles of Confederation. The famous revolutionaries were not delegates. Jefferson and Adams were in Europe. Patrick Henry refused outright, as I think you've probably guessed by now. Thomas Paine, Sam Adams, Christopher Gadsden, not even invited. <laughs> Pretty good scam. Pretty good scam. You gotta think way more critically about what, the way this country was set up. And, I, and look, for the statists out there who wanna argue that the Constitution can be brought under control, you know, that's cool, man. You can, you can work that magic if you want to. I'm not, you can't define authority in nature, so it's not gonna work, but if people, let's face it, even if as, as it exists today, if people were actually, actually cared, even the one that's in there today would probably kinda work. You know, let's be honest, right? We need to take responsibility. 